Hello, my name is Alex Kate and welcome to Just a Guy Cooking. We're very excited because we just launched our premiere episode and now we're filming our second episode, so I'm kind of all pumped up. Which is great because today we're going to cook something that's whimsical and fun. Um, it's really awesome if you have kids, something you can do with your kids and it comes out really cute. So. Um, I'm dressed a little bit down, it's February, but we're in Southern California, so this is also a good dish for all of you people out where it's really cold, So, um, because it's a, a hearty comfort food kind of dish. I'm calling it turkey meatloaf rings with cheesy peasy mashed potatoes. Mm, sound good, Dean? Yes. Uh, of course it does. <laughs> I'm ready to eat. Well, we, we gotta cook it first. <laughs> so, anyway, the first thing to do, we're gonna take about a pound or so of turkey meat. Put that in a mixing bowl. Am I moving too fast for the camera, Dean? <laughs> the last episode we had some issues with not showing enough food, so we're trying to uh, improve as we go. Okay. So you put about a pound or so of turkey meat, however much you want, into the mixing bowl. And we're going to add all of our ingredients. I'm going to do uh, about a half an onion. Chop it up really fine. For those of you who've seen the first episode, you also see that we have things spread out a little bit more, so hopefully I won't have to be... Wait, let me do a pan. Hold on. Doing a walking and talking thing. Let's see what I said. So, just going to dice up my onion really small. Just because if you have big chunks, it's going to make it difficult for the meatloaf to uh, hold together. Oh, this one's going to make me cry. <laughs> Didn't want your we're always going to make references to previous shows, so we're sort of like a cereal. You need to watch it in order. <laughs> <laughs> this is two. Otherwise, it's going to be just a couple of guys talking about a bunch of inside jokes that is going to irritate you, and we don't want that to happen. You can be in on the inside. Exactly. What are you talking about, Dean? <laughs> so anyways, get that all chopped up. And I actually might not use all of this. I think it's too much. So I'll probably just use about half of it. Slap that in there. Oh, what the hell. Mm. I like a lot of onion, apparently. That is a little bit too much. I'm going to do some onion. And we're going to get some garlic going. Oh, big favorite part. I know. I didn't show this last time because the garlic was disappearing. We edited it out. But this is the easiest way to get garlic peeled. Just smash it, and then the peel comes right off. There we go. Boy, this onion is making me cry this time. Woo! Oh, I'm going out to view the camera. <laughs> follow me, Dean, follow me. <laughs> I don't want to have people have to take drama with me to watch it. <laughs> no, some people might be into that. All right, and then I'd always do the garlic slice it pretty small. Especially if I'm doing a meatloaf or something, I like I like it to be sort of like one taste blended all together. So as opposed to everything separating out. A melding. Exactly, a melding Marcos. Boy, I am in a mood today. I don't know what's going on. This is gonna be very silly. <laughs> okay. Let's get that chopped up. Nice and fine. Oops. So, are you running up to the farmer's market to get this stuff, or? No, Rouse. <laughs> Sorry about it, but uh. <laughs> I always forget, you know, we have the farmer's markets around here. I'm just going to uh, preheat the oven to 350 while I'm doing this so it'll be ready when the, when it's ready, when the meatloaf's ready to go in the oven. So, if you wait, then you're sitting around with a bunch of meats and wait for something. Who wants to wait? So anyways, why I've got um, onion, turkey, garlic, one egg, This out of the way here. Let's see, and now I'm going to season it. Salt, 
I go a little generously with the seasoning, so pepper. I'm going to put a little bit of ground red pepper in it. Now, mm. don't, just for a little bit of heat. Not, not very much. Heat is good. I like that. That's just what I do. Of course, if you don't like any heat at all, then by all means, you can cut that out. Now, this time I'm going to use uh, oregano. Uh, that was the last of that. But I am prepared. Look at that. Dean's like, oh my gosh, you are prepared. <laughs> Fabulous. You got the crew together to lay everything out properly. I am still the crew. <laughs> so, oregano. And I am pretty generous with my seasonings. So, this, this part here, I'm not telling you how much to use. It's to your own taste. What is that? This is basil. Okay. So, oregano, basil. Um, and since this is turkey, it's not like ground beef. It doesn't have as much fat and moisture. So I am going to add just a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And a little bit of tomato paste. If you get the tomato paste that comes in the tube, it's so much easier if you haven't discovered this yet. Um, just like a healthy squirt. That's what maybe maybe a couple tablespoons there. If you haven't noticed, I don't really measure. I just sort of throw stuff in. And now what I'm going to use for the filler, I used to use breadcrumbs or panko crumbs or something like that, and then one day I was out of them. So I grabbed some oatmeal and put it in there, and now I use oatmeal all the time. It adds a really interesting flavor and texture, and just maybe a cup or something like that. A smidgen. No, a little more than a smidgen. It adds a nice texture, a nice flavor, and of course the oatmeal gets really soft as it's cooking. So um, once again, it's not one of those things you really notice, it just adds a layer to it that is uh, it's unique, I find. So that's all of the ingredients for our meatloaf. So let me put this out of the way. So now I'm going to, this is the fun part, this is where we get to get messy. So my hands are already washed and uh, I have, can't use my thumb though because when I was grating the cheese earlier to prepare, I grated my thumb. <laughs> so. You want to make sure all of this gets mixed up really well. You want to make sure that tomato paste gets mixed up all the way throughout. The egg gets broken and mixed up all the way throughout. The spices, the herbs. This is the fun part of cooking. It's sort of like being in kindergarten again, finger painting. This is another thing, this is a fun thing if you have kids, to bring the kids along to do it with them. This is a safe part? They won't hurt themselves doing this. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, we aren't, we aren't going to make any promises, you know, because I don't want to get sued. Uh, under this, is only, this is only, pardon me, this is only our second, uh, second episode, I don't think I really want to get sued this early, so anything could happen. Un under close adult supervision. Exactly. There that you disclaimer. Go. It's funny that I, the reason why I'm talking about doing it is kids, I don't have any kids, animals, but no kids. But my sister had a cookbook when we were younger, you know, cooking for kids. And I kind of remember this, this, uh, what I'm doing today was in that book. And I think she made it once. And I don't think I liked it very much. So I've improved upon whatever that was so many years ago. So now that that's all nicely mixed, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make the rings. So I have a cooking sheet. I don't have any, I'm not going to spray it or anything like that. It'll be fine. Oh, it, let's, let's see the mix. You see the mix? Yeah, sure. There you go. So that's what it looks like when it's all thoroughly mixed really well. All right. So I'm going to take about a handful like that. Okay. So, so maybe, I don't know, maybe it's about a cup of the mixture. And um, 
to play with it. You want it because we're going to make a ring. So you kind of smoosh it out, almost like if you're making bread. If you've ever made bread, um, but just take it and form a ring. And because it's wet and moist, it went with a little center here, because eventually the mashed potatoes are going to go in here. Oh, that's a surprise. But you're making a little well, okay? Just make sure it's all sort of joined together there. This is great if you have company too, because everybody gets their own little meatloaf. It's going to be really, really pretty when we're finished. We're going to make for the, enough for the other six people here, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Honey, guess what we're having for dinner tonight? Whenever I cook on TV. <laughs> I'm not cooking twice. And while you're doing this, you can make, you can even them out so they don't look lopsided. So you're making rings with little holes in them. Could you use mini bunt cakes? Molds? No. And the reason why you can't is because, well, you'll see. Okay. Because it's what we do with the mashed potatoes. Yep. So, so we're going to make a few of these. So that I'm on the last ring here. I had to get another cookie sheet, which Dean was so kind to uh, get for me since I didn't get turkey loaf all over my drawers and <laughs> kitchen appliances and whatnot. Um, so um, we're about ready to go to the oven. The oven is uh, fully, it's at 350. And um, so what we have is you have your rings and we're gonna cook this at 350 for just about 30 minutes, which isn't gonna completely cook it, but we don't wanna completely cook it. Um, so, uh, and you'll find out why in just a bit. So, uh, what I need to do is wash my hands first. Are you gonna follow me, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Check out my panning skills, right? Exactly. I'm making Dean go as high tech as possible. <laughs> He's going to love it when I hang it from the ceiling on the third episode <laughs> to do an overhead shot. I'm cheaper than getting mirrors. <laughs> I just have to get the rigging is all. Right. So, so we've got our rings all ready to go into the oven. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. So let's go ahead and put them in here. Said we're going to set it for 30 minutes. So, those are cooking. Now, while those are cooking, we're going to get the potatoes ready. So, I usually keep I usually keep a small bag of um, let me wipe this up a little bit. Clean as I go. I usually keep a small bag of red potatoes in the fridge just if I ever want something. So that's what I'm going to use. You can use any kind of potatoes you want, of course. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to peel them. I'm just going to uh, leave the skins on, boil them, and then and then uh, just mash them with the skins. So they've been scrubbed down. And oh yeah, I scrubbed them. I already scrubbed them with a vegetable scrubber before I and comet right got started. Yes, and bleach. Which is which is exactly why Dean is behind the camera, as opposed to in front of the camera. You don't know where they've been. They've been in the dirt. <laughs> you 
you know, it's funny, last episode, I was just thinking, the last episode we talked about, um, I made some comments about social media and things like that and how people say just whatever they want to behind the safety of their computer screen. And, uh, well, I did that yesterday by accident. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. So, it was funny, I, um, I'm a big Walking Dead fan and uh, love it, love it, love it. And uh, I've been watching it since it started. And, uh, oh, there's some spoiler alerts that are coming. I'll try and be delicate if you haven't seen it since it started again in February, so. But I saw an article on Facebook that talked about um, um, how a certain character was killed off who's black, and it was Black History Month, and there's all sorts of tweets about how it was racist and why could they kill the black guy and why they have to do it on Black History Month, and on and on and on and on and on. And I gotta say, it was pretty ridiculous in my opinion. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but um, I got to thinking about it. And what I wrote was, I, I, I reposted the, the article and I, I made my little comment, but then I made a comment afterwards that said, if you th really think this is racist, you're probably one yourself. That's the kind of comments that I don't really find attractive in a person, myself included. Because it's judgmental, and it uh, puts people on the defensive, and it can start that sort of sort of vitriolic um, discussion, which I don't think is really constructive. But I will, what I will say about it, in my personal you opinion... Be chopping and talking. Huh? Chopping and talking. Oh yeah, I do two things at once? <laughs> So, anyway, I think I about have about enough potatoes. Once again, the amount of potatoes, it just depends on, on uh, how much meat rings. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the mashed potatoes with the cheesy peas in them, which you'll see in a second, in a, in a little bit, and we're going to put them inside the meatloaf ring, so it'll all be one dish. So I'm going to put this on to boil, and I'll get back to my story. Now, I'll tell my story. So, here we go. And salt the water, and salt it pretty well. And then you bring that to a boil. For how long? Until the potatoes are soft. How long? However long it takes. I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Once it's boil, once it's actually boiling, if I had started the water earlier, it would already be hot, and I didn't. So, um, but, but once the water is boiling, it usually takes potatoes about 10 to 15 minutes to get really soft. It depends on how, on how mashed you want them. I'm going to whip them, so I want them to be very, very soft. If I, sometimes I'll just cook them to where they're just a little bit soft, and then just mix them with a little bit of butter and not mash them at all. So there's, I like them a little firmer, so it just depends on what you need. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cook them until I test them with a fork and they just sort of fall apart and then we'll go ahead and whip them up. Um, so wait, for that I'm going to finish my story now, Dean. <laughs> so anyway, the one thing I did want to say about that is, um, because this is a place where we can talk about those things that are sensitive subjects, and try and talk about them in a different way, is, um, you know, with that particular show, people die. <laughs> it's just a part of the show. And it's not really about race or color. And I think if we choose to make it about that, it's our problem. It's not the show's problem. And the reason why I say that is sometimes something will happen and I'll react to it, but it'll be more about the, the very specific thing. And if I widen the scope and look at the big picture, I see it a lot differently. And for example, with something as simple as The Walking Dead, if you, I thought about it this morning. And I thought, well, you know, actually, um, they've killed black people, they've killed white people, they've killed pretty blonde-haired, blue-eyed girls, and killed a mom right after she gave birth and made her son shoot her in the head so she didn't come back to a zombie. So I don't think it's, you know, racially exclusive who they're killing. And then the other thing I thought about was all of the really evil people that have been on it, uh, the governor, all the villains who aren't zombies, they've actually all been white people. So, um, so I don't know, I think maybe the show's being a little bit more fair than you're giving credit for it. The truth of the matter is, I think the character that got killed, we just, none of us wanted to see him die. At all. Ever. <laughs> because he was a good guy. 
So it seems that that show, Good Guys Die, it's sort of a thing. As soon as you start loving someone, they get rid of them. So uh, it's bad, part of the game for that show. Bad news for the actor. Bad news for the actor. <laughs> ah, well, they'll get royalties for years, so they're right. <laughs> Anyway, that's my that's my little thing. But the, uh, uh, about that. But I th I think the point that I'm trying to make though isn't so much about whether it's racist or whether it's not. It's how we have the discussion about it. Um, you know, because my first reaction really was I mean, as soon as they killed him, I thought well they brought a new black guy on, so they're going to kill off one. And I said it as a joke. And I know other people that said that as a joke. Um, and I think it's okay to put that out there. You know, because it keeps the discussion going. And, um, so anyway, I, I, I just don't, I just, I really personally don't believe. I choose not to believe. It could be true. I could be wrong. But I kind of choose to, be, to believe that they aren't sitting in the writing room thinking, okay, let's kill the black guy and let's wait till Black History Month to really make a statement. I think they've got bigger fish to fry. So, anyway, we're going to let our potatoes boil. And uh, as soon as they're done, we'll be back with the rest of the meal. I'm on, hey. So our potatoes are boiling. And um, sometimes they'll boil over. And what you can do, and I'm not having a problem today with that. But what you can do is you can add just a little bit of olive oil on the top of it. And it'll keep the water from bubbling over. So I just periodically take a fork. See, they're getting soft. You can actually break them a little bit. And they've only been going for about 10 or 15 minutes. But they can go a little bit softer even. There's still a little bit of firmness when I put the fork into the potato. So I don't want that at all for these because we're going to make them nice and creamy. So uh, we're going to let them go for just a few more minutes. And our meatloafs are still cooking. They've got just a few more minutes. Because um, I was chatting so much earlier, I got my timing a little bit off. So um, what we'll do is we'll pull the meatloaf out for a little bit and finish the potatoes and then do what we need to do. So, which you'll see in just a few more minutes. All right, so our meatloaf is partially done for now. So we're gonna pull it out. Leave the stove on though, because we don't wanna, we gotta cook it some more. They're looking good. That little one's almost off, but that's okay. And our potatoes should also be done. See, I can just mash them with the fork, so that's done enough. So I'm going to turn that off, and then I need to get a strainer. We're going to go over to the sink and dump the water out. Try really hard not to burn yourself. going to do is just add about two tablespoons of butter, and I always use real butter, and milk, and then um, as far as, well, it's low fat milk, uh, you cut corners where you can, right? <laughs> um, the more milk you add, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup, half cup, the more milk you add, the creamier it'll be, salt, and you use the low fat butter, right? Uh, there's no such thing as low-fat butter, but thanks for playing, Dean. <laughs> Actually, you know, real butter is better for you than the fake stuff, you know. If I'm going to use it, I want it to be real. That's the way I look at it. Whee! Oh, we're splattering. Now, it's actually okay to make these a little extra creamy. Uh, because we're going to add cheese to them as well, so that will help to thicken them up. Are you getting that pretty good, Dean? Yeah. Great. And my favorite part about cooking is what? The licking. Tasting. 
Mm, good stuff. So, so how 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 smooth are those? Are they lumpy? Are they smooth? Uh, well, they're a little lumpy because of the skins, but they're pretty smooth. The potato potato part is pretty smooth because I whipped it. You can also mash it if you want more lumps. Um, that's a personal that's a personal preference. I just whip it till it looks creamy, and then we're gonna add cheese. I grated the cheese before earlier. Also grated my thumb. I think I might have told you that already. <laughs> and then peas. These are just frozen peas. And once again, it's however much you want. I'm going to put quite a few in there because I like it. And I kind of got this idea, um, like when I was a kid, I would always mix my peas with my mashed potatoes when I was eating. I was, there was something about that I liked. So I thought, well, let's just make a whole dish like that. So I'm going to grab a spoon. So this is an original dish? Uh, it's original. Yeah, I think I made it up. I didn't get the recipe from anywhere. It is an original dish. So just mix that up really well. I actually think it looks kind of pretty too. <laughs> so, pretty food tastes better, I think. Mm, messy food tastes better. Uh, well, if it's pretty messy, then it must be really good, huh? <laughs> but I'm bummed. Uh -huh. So I've got my meatloaf rings, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the potatoes and stick them right in there. I probably made too much potatoes, but you know what? It doesn't hurt my feelings to have leftover cheesy mashed potatoes around. For a short while. <laughs> That's right. Just scoop that right in there in the center. That one got a little messy, but that'll be Dean's because the messy's his favorite. <laughs> and it's bigger. And it's bigger, and bigger is better. It is. I'm just gonna walk over here with my pot. Do these last two over here. Oh. This one poor little guy is going to be a little bit well done, but he'll be all right. Well done is good too. And this is the part that I always think is fun for kids, because this is this is fun food. Little whimsy never hurt anybody. There's not enough whimsy in the world. So we're going to put this back in for about 15 minutes. Oh, I forgot. The smell is amazing. Oh, is it? Are you yeah. like, can you smell it? Yes. It, good? it smells great. Good. Well, I guess it's pretty well seasoned, so you've got a lot of nice flavors going on there. So we're going to put that in for 15 more minutes. Oh, I forgot to taste this. I love food. <laughs> it's, I love food. So. So while that's cooking, we got another element. This is the this is this is a there's a little more to this that we're making than it was for the roast beef po' boys that we made on the last episode. We're gonna make a sauce to go on top of everything, on top of the uh, uh, the meatloaf rings. So what I'm gonna use is, and once again, I don't measure. <laughs> so you kind of kind of just go with taste and play around with it. And I've done different variations of this. So uh, but I'm gonna use molasses. Honey, if I need to, because sometimes it's, I, I get too much vinegary tasting. But I'm gonna have some molasses, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, and uh, and mustard. So I'm gonna take put a, a low heat, like a medium heat, and I'm gonna add just a a glop of molasses. Can you see that in the pan there, Dean? No. You bring to. Oh, just a glob wait, wait. of molasses. Wait, this way. Over there. Up. Over there. Wait, up. Up there. There we go. Yeah. Wait, let me focus it. Dean, we're gonna teach you to move the camera as opposed to moving me. <laughs> I think he just like I think he just likes to direct me. That's all. <laughs> so anyway, so just a glob of molasses. Now Michael, my partner, does not a 
eventually I'll do enough of these episodes I won't have to keep telling you he's my partner because you'll remember. But uh, Michael uh, doesn't like it if it's too vinegary, so I always use more ketchup than mustard. I like that tartness, but he's not a big fan. So I put in some must some ketchup, and once again, it's just um, it's I just feel my way around. So and then some mustard, a little bit of mustard. Huh? Tilt. I'm moving around. I'm moving around. No, tilt, see. tilt, tilt. Wait more. Ooh, there we go. Good. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of mustard, and then just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. That's a smidgen. That was a smidgen. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna put on the heat and let it melt together a little bit. Just mix it all up. And sometimes I make this without molasses. If I make it without molasses, I don't even put it on. I don't even heat it up because it'll blend pretty well together. So it just makes it, and it's, it makes it a really, it's sort of like making a barbecue sauce, sort of a poor man's version of a barbecue sauce, because if you look at the color, can you see that? Yeah, looks good. Yeah, it's very nice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little taste. Just to see how it's going. So is it real sweet? It's a little sweet. It's really good. The molasses helps to smooth out the vinegar, so I'm not going to add any honey to it. So, because then it would be just way too sweet. Cool. So I'm just going to let that stay warm, and then we'll get the plates ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to serve this on a bed of spinach, tossed in just a little bit of balsamic vinaigrette. Which actually I'm going to wait to toss it because I don't want the lettuce to get too wilty. So we've got a few more minutes for the meatloaf rings to uh, finish cooking and we'll be back to plate everything up and see what it tastes like. Our meatloaf rings with cheesy peasy mashed potato shit, they're done right now. Let's go take a look. Didn't oh that come my out beautiful? god. That looks amazing. Let me get a close up. Can you get it right there? Yeah. Right. Oops. Oh my gosh. These are so much fun, aren't they? Uh, it's just, we gotta work scent in there somehow. <laughs> You are bound and determined to do create snatches, sniff and scratch and sniff. sniff. We, we. All right. So now we're gonna take these little meatloaf uh, pockets with the cheesy peasy mashed potatoes, and we're gonna make them really pretty. So what I've got, I've got uh, baby spinach, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I do not want to get this wilted or wet, so just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Just what it's doing is just adding another layer of flavor to the entire dish. No no spicing, no salt, no pepper. No, okay. doesn't need it. Okay. Doesn't need it. It's one of the few times I say no to that. So I'm just going to swish that around a little bit so the leaves get covered. And then we're going to put it on the plate. Oh, that smells good too. <laughs> Dean, you came hungry, didn't you? I did. I had breakfast about six o'clock this morning. I was barely getting to sleep at six o'clock this morning. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to. And it slides right up, like so. Place it right on top there.
Oh, they look amazing. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah. And take a little bit of this, and we're just gonna drizzle this on the top. Oh, I get it. I've I've seen stuff like this, but they put like a uh, parsley and stuff. This looks way better. <laughs> Thank you. And if you really want to go crazy, you could also add a little paprika on top of the uh, mashed potatoes just to add another little bit of color. But for me, the sauce does that enough. I've made two here because I know Dean wants one, so. <laughs> you gotta pay the cameraman something. <laughs> gotta pay the cameraman something. Gotta pay the cameraman something. All right, so why don't we uh, taste it and see how it is? It's another one of those great dishes. Look at that, you see that there? Wait, how let, me, got, let me get in. How you've got the potato oh. and the meat all together. So I'm gonna grab a little piece of there. And the cheese. And the cheese and the peas. So let's try it, it's a big bite. Mmm. This is like fancy comfort food. Huh. <laughs> and it's not that difficult. It is so nice. It is so good. It just takes meatloaf to a different level. And it makes it just so much fun to eat. It's a beautiful presentation. Um, you need to make this. <laughs> it's delicious. So what we have, we've got, we use turkey meat. Onion, garlic, salt, pepper. Um, I used oregano, basil, a little bit of uh, crushed red pepper. And there's really no heat, like hot heat. I could have used more. Um, but I just want a little bit light just for a little extra flavor. Um, a little bit of olive oil, uh, tomato paste. And then of course we had the mashed potatoes with peas and cheese in the mashed potatoes. On a bed of spinach with balsamic vinegar. Uh, topped with a... a, a sauce made out of Worcestershire, uh, ketchup, mustard, and molasses. And all of it together is just this wonderful sort of unified dish. You know, all those flavors come together and makes a great eating experience. So, um, I hope you give this a shot. Try and make it. Uh, Dean and I are going to enjoy our lunches now, and uh, we will see you in the next episode. And please, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to like us, and to share with others. And we also have our Facebook page, Just a Guy Cooking. So uh, hook up with us so we can stay who? hooked up with you. Hmm? With who? Oh, with me, Alex Cate. <laughs> My brander over there. Um, so, Dean, Dean, you're hilarious. Yeah. So uh, my name is Alex Cate, and I am Just a Guy Cooking, and we'll see you next time.